Cauldron Films has just released on Blu-ray the 1973 East Meets West uh, Kung Fu Spaghetti Western Shanghai Joe. This is a film I had never heard of, but I love spaghetti westerns and I love kung fu movies. So sort of it's a two great tastes that taste great together kind of thing. So this stars Chen Li, who was actually not his real name. He was actually a Japanese martial artist who was playing Chinese in this film. And it has a few familiar faces other than that. You have uh, Giacomo Rossi Stewart, you have Klaus Kinski, and you have uh, Gordon Mitchell. Uh, none of those names that are large names to you, uh, if they are names at all to you, are really in the film for very long. So the basic idea here is it opens up with a title card that says, okay, it's supposed to be San Francisco 1882, but it says ST. So it's like St. Francisco 1882, which I, I get why they would do that, but it just, it's just, I, I was amused by that. So you have the Chen Li character. He's a, he's a Chinese guy in San Francisco in that period. Uh, simple guy, easygoing guy, looking to get a ticket to Texas to find work and finds racism everywhere. Manages to get a ticket to, uh, to on a cover, not a covered wagon, a wagon, what do you want to call it? A wagon ride? Stagecoach to Texas. Has to sit outside, sort of like the back of the bus thing, but the back of the bus is sitting on the back of it the whole time and just meets racism and, and obstruction everywhere he goes. He's an easygoing guy just wants to honest day's pay for an honest day's work. But if he's pushed too far, the feet and the fists will fly. And the first time it does that is a barroom brawl with a bunch of racist lunkheads in Texas. And it's, the, the foo is good, the choreography is good, but it also at times feels like a Three Stooges sequence because I'm not gonna give away too much of what happens in this movie, but at the end of the fight, he jumps over the bar in this saloon. He takes this thing, this, shelf, I guess, that had these two, three, three holes in it that were holding large uh, pots or something. And he throws it at these three guys, three guys who have, he has just beaten up, takes the pots out, throws this piece of wood with three holes in it, and it lands perfectly on their necks. Clearly it was done in reverse where they just pulled it off their necks. And it was like a Stooges film where somebody like squeezes a banana and it lands in somebody's mouth, uh, which I just found funny. I'm a big Stooges fan. So anytime I can see a taste of that in a film that probably shouldn't have a taste of that, it, it amuses me. So the basic story is that uh, this this Asian man is, is working his way. I, I don't remember, I meant to look this up to see if the show Kung Fu came before this, but it feels a lot like the show Kung Fu and that he's just trying to get by and people keep coming up against him and he, somebody's gonna get a foot in the face. He gets hired by a bad guy to sort of help be one of his gang of thugs. That doesn't go well. Eventually he meets up with a woman played by Carla Romanelli, who is sort of in trouble and he decides to take care of her and make sure the bad guys don't get her. And it's just a series of bad guys who think that they can take this guy out and they think wrong. So Giacomo Rossi Stewart is in it briefly. He has something really gruesome done to him in the last moments of his on-screen life. Klaus Kinski shows up. He doesn't last very long. Gordon Mitchell shows up, also expires on screen. Not to give anything away, but just to say that everybody that you see in the titles and you're like, oh man, Klaus Kinski is gonna be the villain in this. He's gonna be a villain in this for a period of time. It's fun, it's, it's mostly played straight, but it's a little light here and there. It is funny oftentimes when our, our lead character leaps through the air and sort of does, does a sound that's not unlike what Jim Kelly did as Black Belt Jones where he's just, it's, I know it's, I'm not making fun of, of, of anything. I'm just saying the, the guttural grunts they have him do with a slight echo is kind of funny. Uh, in the end, he goes up against a samurai that is hired to bring in. They're like, we're gonna fight. We're gonna fight foo with foo. We're bringing in a, we're bringing in a samurai. And uh, that has a little wire work where Maybe originally in the theater you didn't see the wires, maybe. Maybe on home video. <clears throat> I get choked up when I talk about wire work. Maybe on home video, like on a VHS transfer of this, you might not have seen it. But in this gorgeous Cauldron Films, pristine, razor sharp HD transfer, you clearly see the wires these guys are on. Luckily it's very brief, but it's, it's, it's present enough to be distracting. As I said, so it's a fun movie. I really, I really enjoy, as I said, it's, it's two genres I really like. It's, it's done well, it's a lot of fun, not that long, 90 something minutes. Um, and it's presented either in its English dubbed form or Italian with English subtitles. You have a commentary by 
this is where I look at my notes. You, you're not hearing the scroll reel right now, I swear. You have a commentary by Mike House from the Spaghetti Western Digest. It's a little low key, but informative. And at times you, you, he actually says, and you hear him like shuffling papers and looking for something in his notes, uh, but it's still good. It's, it's interesting information about all the people involved in the genre in general. You get a really good short uh, featurette called East Meets West Italian Style. It's a visual essay by film historian Eric Zaldivar. That's 20 minutes loaded with clips and stills and posters. And he just goes through all of the known East meets West movies where it's martial arts and spaghetti Westerns combined. And even goes through some that are like, people are gonna say this is East meets West, but it's not. So it's fun, it's breezy and very informative. And it gives you a list of other movies you wanna watch. You have Samurai Spirit interview with Master Katsu Soshi, I'm always gonna mangle these names. Katsu Soshi Mikiara, sorry, who played the bad guy at the end of the movie. That's nine minutes and it, it is focused primarily on this film and it's interesting. You get the trailer, which is three minutes and it's a classic Italian uh, spaghetti Western trailer. So it has the weird graphics and the bright colors and it's it's dialogue free. The Any text you see is in Italian, but the dialogue is, is um, is, is is not present, so you're, you're not dealing with dubbed or, or subtitles there. And you have an image gallery that's two minutes that plays, uh, it's an auto advance over silent, uh, over silent nothingness, and that is uh, several posters and uh, things like that. Posters video covers alternate titles. The sh this is called Shanghai Joe here. Italian title was the equivalent of My Name is Shanghai Joe, and the German title is something like uh, Karate Joe or something like that. It was just an odd slight tweaking of the title. So um, if you want to see what the packaging looks like, I happen to have one right here. This is the uh, the, the cover. That's what the nice artwork, nice uh, vintage style artwork. You get the back. Whoa, you get the back, which is slippery, which is a lot of text and the disc itself and a reversible clear case cover, which you know I'm a fan of with alternate uh, artwork with the uh, Italian title on it. So this was a really fun discovery for me, a film I'd never heard of, total blast, gorgeous transfer and uh, treatment from Cauldron, which is becoming one of my favorite indie labels that I didn't know about recently. And I'm just like, wow, everything they put out is like top notch and they load them with extras and they're not frivolous extras, they're good extras. And uh, I really, I can't wait to see what they put out next. So available now on Blu-ray from Cauldron Films is 1973's Spaghetti Western Kung Fu Mashup Shanghai Joe.